we have a specific goal that's based on what we think the workforce needs will be by 2020. We know that about 74% of the new jobs will require some level of post-secondary credential, a certificate, an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree. We know we're not on track to get there. We would have to increase degree production by at least 1,000 credentials every year. And so that's our goal, 1,000 above what we are currently on track to achieve. The good news about Colorado is that we have a relatively high, when compared to other states, degree attainment. Uh, right now we're the second most well-educated state in the country, but it varies dramatically from demographic group to demographic group. So our white front-range population, very well-educated, our Hispanic population, our rural population, dramatically lower. We know that if we want to improve the economy throughout the state, and if we want to plan you know, to have the workforce we need for the future, we've got to do a better job of targeting those minority and low-income students and making sure that they can be successful. Well, we've done many different things, and some of them are further along than others. One of the most successful so far is concurrent enrollment. We're allowing students to earn college credit while they're still in high school. About 25% of the juniors and seniors in Colorado are now enrolled in concurrent enrollment courses. So these are students who are completing their high school uh, degree requirements, but are also getting college credit for college level courses. We also have something called the Ascent Program, which allows students to stay for a fifth year in high school and take college courses. Many of those students are graduating from high school with an associate's degree. Well, one of the things we're doing with the institutions to encourage them is we've changed the way we allocate financial aid. We have what we now call a completion incentive model so that when we take state financial aid, we give uh, a certain amount for freshmen, but then we increase that for sophomores and increase it again for juniors and again for seniors. So now the institutions can still allocate that money to individual students however they want, but they'll get more if they successfully retain a student and move that student towards completion. We think that provides a financial incentive to the schools to provide the supportive services they need or their students need in order to succeed. Well, I think every state has to recognize, and as the Georgetown Center recently I think made very clear more and more jobs of the future are going to require post-secondary credentials of some kind. Very few states are on track. Uh, very few states will have enough uh, graduates to meet the workforce demands and certainly not enough to attract the kind of industries we're all looking to attract to our respective states. Right now we invest a lot of money in making sure that we have high quality institutions. We invest a lot of money in financial aid. We don't invest enough money in either making sure that students are adequately prepared when they enter college or that they get the supportive services they need to finish college. I know when I came to University of Colorado 35 years ago that I was not ready and that I didn't have any support at the campus when I got there. And I quickly fell behind and barely survived. But those first two years were very tough. I almost left. Too many students find themselves in that same situation and they just quietly leave. Now, whether it's the University of Colorado or Pikes Peak Community College, all institutions are much more focused on identifying students like me, identifying them early, providing them the intervention services they need so that they can succeed. That's the key.